This season, Instacart has your back to school. As in, they've got your back to school lunch favorites like snack packs and fresh fruit. And they've got your back to school supplies like backpacks, binders, and pencils. And they've got your back when your kid casually tells you they have a huge school project due tomorrow. Let's face it, we were all that kid. So first, call your parents to say I'm sorry, and then download the Instacart app to get delivery in as fast as 30 minutes all school year long. Get a $0 delivery fee with your first three orders while supplies last. Minimum $10 an order. Additional terms apply. Seven things you don't really need to know, but probably should. I'm Kira Revan, and this, this is the Sunday 7. On today's episode of the award-winning Sunday 7, we explain what you need to know about the MPOX outbreak. Will Guide sheds a tear for Elon's bankers. We track the surprising history of Stonehenge and find out why your ham sandwich might be trying to kill you. Remember, if you're enjoying this episode, please do like and follow or maybe post a review. We're here seven days a week at 7am with the Smart 7 to get you up to speed on the seven biggest stories of the day. But before we get into the episode, it was on this day in 1981 that NASA's Voyager 2 spacecraft made its closest pass to Saturn, sending back incredible photos showing not just a few rings, but thousands of rings around the distant planet. That probe continued on past Saturn and is still out there somewhere. It's been just over 10 days since the World Health Organization announced that it was escalating its response to an MPOX outbreak in West Africa to the level of an international alert. Dr. Tedros Ghebreyesus, the Director General of the WHO, made the announcement. The situation constitutes a public health emergency of international concern. The detection and rapid spread of a new clade of MPOX in Eastern DRC, its detection in neighboring countries that had not previously reported MPOX, and the potential for further spread within Africa and beyond is very worrying. That announcement led to a bit of confusion, though, for a couple of reasons. There was a previous international alert over MPOX back in July 2022, which was then lifted 10 months later. And the World Health Organization have also had to clarify that they're not just suggesting that MPOX is at the level of the COVID-19 pandemic, partly because more is known about the disease and its transmission, while there are also vaccines available. The issue is a new strain that has developed as Dr. Margaret Harris, public health specialist and World Health Organization spokesperson, explains. It's called Clade 1B. The one that went worldwide two years ago was Clade 2, and that actually arose from West Africa. But what we're seeing now, this Clade 2B, it's showing some different characteristics. It's transmitting very, very rapidly. And unfortunately, we are seeing a high death rate, particularly among children. So these are things that have concerned us very much. While the 2022 outbreak was largely confined to gay and bisexual men, the latest variant is spreading more widely, but still primarily through skin to skin contact. Experts, however, believe that there may also be droplet transmission because of the prevalence of blisters brought on by the disease. Helen Rees is from the South Africa MPOX incident management team, and she said the rapid spread of the disease in the Democratic Republic of Congo which has seen over 15,000 cases and 500 deaths, is a real worry and is driven in part by the lack of information. There has been a shameful lack of investment to support researchers in African countries to really understand MPOX better. We still globally do not have a good understanding of MPOX on the outbreaks, how it spreads, how many asymptomatic cases do we have for every case that we find with symptoms? We do not have a good understanding. There have been cases of the new variant outside of Africa too, with Sweden, the Philippines, Thailand and Pakistan all reporting new cases this week. The early symptoms include fever, headaches and muscle aches, followed by a rash of one to five days. But Paul Hunter, Professor of Medicine at the University of Anglia, says it's only a matter of time before there's a case in the UK. I think it's quite likely that cases are already in other countries in Europe, and including the United Kingdom. But we won't necessarily know for a while. While the disease is spreading rapidly in Africa, that is partly due to a lack of available vaccines and failure of the public health systems to make them available. In the UK, Professor Yvonne Gillis, chair of the British HIV Association, says it's a different matter. There is vaccine available in the UK and currently it will be uh, mainly used in the context of post-exposure prophylaxis and will not be uh, given in advance to people travelling to countries.
It's been another busy week as the summer wound down. Gamescom took place in Germany and the clock ticked closer to the next Apple event. This week we've had more bad news for Elon, a rare case of a publisher agreeing to work with AI and a truly bizarre lawsuit involving Disney. There's only one man we trust to decipher the small print on big tech's terms and conditions and that is Will Magnifying Glass Guy it. So, well, this Disney case seems bizarre. What happened? Well, I'm still trying to get my head around this story. Imagine this. A man filed a wrongful death lawsuit after his wife died from a severe allergic reaction after eating a meal at Disney World in Florida. He alleges an Irish-themed pub restaurant did not do enough to protect his wife, despite being told she had a severe reaction to milk and nuts in any food. And unbelievably, Disney's lawyer suggested the claim couldn't go to court where evidence would be heard by a jury. Instead, it should go to arbitration. This is a way to get legal claims heard behind closed doors by an independent third party and avoiding a trial. And for Disney's reasoning, he couldn't sue them because he briefly had a Disney Plus trial in 2019 and a clause in the terms and conditions meant they could push this case down a more confidential route. Were they really trying to claim that the terms and conditions for Disney Plus protected them? Absolutely, and they only rolled back when the negative publicity made the House of Mouse look like the very worst of corporate America and not a happy jolly place where all your dreams come true. Should I be more careful on what boxes I tick? Based on this ridiculous story and the brass neck of a collective of lawyers, I'm saying yes. The challenge is reading the full terms and conditions on a site like Disney Plus would take you at least half a Mandalorian when it should probably take less than a Mickey Mouse short. There are of course plenty of stories about our dear friend Elon Musk and X. This week he's under pressure from the banks. It's time to pour one out for the world's richest man. The banks that loaned him 13 billion US dollars to buy Twitter, now X, appear to be having some regrets. Given so much happens in Elon's world, it's easy to forget. But according to the Wall Street Journal, who know way more about financial stuff like this than I do, this has become the worst merger finance deal for banks since the 2008-2009 financial crisis. Basically, the banks thought lending money to Musk was going to be too good to be true, but nobody's wanted to buy these debts from them, and that means they haven't made any additional cash on the loans. I'm not sure who I'm meant to be crying for here, Elon or a bunch of bankers. And we found out a bit more about who his investors are. We have, and it feels a bit bizarre that the world's richest man has to borrow money to buy a company, but he borrowed cash from some mega banks, including Morgan Stanley and the Bank of America, who are probably now just days away from launching crowdfunders to try and recover it. There have been many lawsuits flying this year around AI and content, but not everyone has got the lawyers on standby. What's the strategy from Vogue publisher Condé Nast? The mega publisher, if such a thing in traditional media still exists, have signed a large partnership deal with OpenAI, which will see ChatGPT trained on content from these magazine brands. And while the financial amount hasn't been announced, Condé Nast have chosen to strike a deal rather than rely on a costly legal battle with OpenAI, a strategy which other publishers are taking to protect their content. The reality is, OpenAI needs decent content to train and enhance its AI models, so they are prepared to do deals like this. So will ChatGPT be giving me fashion advice? That's quite possible because they've launched a prototype of something called Search GPT. That's an AI-powered search engine that has the potential to push something like Google out the way. And with deals like this from Condé Nast in mind, it might soon be telling you whether that crushed velvet cravat is still on trend. Movers and shakers of the gaming world have been in Cologne this week for Gamescom. What were the big announcements, Will? With the collapse of the E3 gaming event in Los Angeles, Gamescom is now the world's biggest event for both the industry and punters. And this year has felt pretty strong for new game announcements, both big and small. And while the film adaptation might be absolute crap, the Borderlands game franchise is back in 2025 with a fourth entry into the series. Gamers have been really excited about this. Another one that looked good was Marvel Rivals. That's a new free-to-play shooter which is out pre-Christmas and has got loads of your favourite characters. It looks like it's got a lot in common with Overwatch and that will be music to the ears of many games fans. It's out on December the 6th and I'll be suited up like Iron Man ready to challenge you. You love vintage games but what about the modern world? Is there something that you're really looking forward to? Video game trailers don't really give away much but 2025 looks pretty strong. Mafia the Old Country looks like the Robert De Niro flashbacks in Godfather Part 2 and that could be a perfect setting for the next instalment in the long running crime series. 
My game of the show is Indiana Jones and the Great Circle. Harrison Ford might have just been too ancient in the last movie, but now you can play the character in his prime, searching tombs, solving puzzles, slapping Nazis, and looking for shiny artefacts. It's out on Xbox pre-Christmas, everything else next year, and it's the first thing on my big list for Santa Claus. So to come on the Sunday 7, AI gets used for good and evil, and your ham sandwich might be trying to kill you. The UK's waterways are in real trouble with sewage spills from water companies wreaking havoc across the nation. The new Labour government is set to introduce a water bill by next year to help clean things up. But clean water campaigner Fergus Sharkey has had enough and he's planning to mass protest on October 26th to mark 100 days of Keir Starmer's leadership and apply political pressure for more action. In the meantime, with pollution making swimming unsafe, AI-based technology has been introduced on a trial basis by a startup company called Unif AI Technology, which will get swimmers the green light to swim using sensors and a mobile phone app. Chief Commercial Officer Dan Biles explains how their AI water sensors work. At the moment, if people want to know what's going on in their water, it's literally a sample is taken, driven off to a laboratory. Three days later, they will tell you, by the way, you should not have been swimming last Thursday. And that's not good enough. The state of Britain's rivers and coasts is terrible. This is not something that's happened overnight. It's a problem that's been brewing over decades. And it's not something that's going to be solved overnight. It's going to take a lot of time and effort from lots of different stakeholders in order to solve this problem. It's a good and practical use of AI, which is increasingly part of the conversation in daily life. Not all AI has been used for good, though, particularly when it comes to generating video content. There's been a surge of deep fake pornography, which uses AI to place familiar faces into adult content or to nudify people by generating images in which clothes are removed using AI. Now, San Francisco City Attorney David Chu is launching a crackdown on these AI-driven sites that create images without any consent from the victim. He estimates that these kind of sites have reached over 200 million visits in the first six months of this year and that the AI exploitation needs to stop. These websites allow users to upload photos of real clothed individuals. AI technology will then, quote, undress these persons in the photo, creating pornographic images. While profiting off this content, these website operators have violated a plethora of state and federal laws banning deep fake pornography, revenge pornography, child pornography. This investigation has taken our office into the darkest corners of the internet. All of us have been absolutely horrified for the women and girls who have had to endure this exploitation. Even in a world of wraps, acai bowls and exotic delights from your local convenience store, the humble ham sandwich still holds its own at the top of our favourite lunches. But if you're a ham sandwich fan, there's bad news this week. We already knew that processed meats and ultra-processed foods generally can be particularly bad for your health. But it's a shock to see a headline that says eating a ham sandwich a day can cause type 2 diabetes. It's not that simple, apparently. And the latest study, which was published in The Lancet, suggests that it's not just a ham sandwich, but a host of other risk factors that can make diabetes or bowel cancer more likely. Professor Nita Faroui is from the Medical Research Council in Epidemiology Unit at Cambridge University and says that they've looked at a range of factors in calculating the risk. We know for sure that people who consume more red or processed meat consume less fruit and vegetables, their fibre intake is lower and other uh, health behaviours such as lower physical activity and greater uh, levels of smoking etc. They go hand in hand. So it's, it's that opportunity cost and displacement effect. That's one mechanism that we do know about. Now, processed meats do have particular things that can disrupt health. And for cancer, some of this has been done in animal studies and other experiments. For diabetes, it is possible that these sort of additives like the nitrite and nitrate compounds in processed meats that are added to preserve it could potentially have an impact on the pancreatic beta cell. Now, it's not done and dusted, but it is being looked at. Still to come on Sunday 7, Stonehenge reveals a surprising secret and good news as an Alzheimer's drug gets the green light. Right after this. This season, Instacart has your back to school. As in, they've got your back to school lunch favorites like snack packs and fresh fruit. And they've got your back to school supplies like backpacks, binders and pencils. And they've got your back when your kid casually tells you they have a huge school project due tomorrow. Let's face it, we were all that kid. 
So first, call your parents to say I'm sorry, and then download the Instacart app to get delivery in as fast as 30 minutes all school year long. Get a $0 delivery fee with your first three orders while supplies last. Minimum $10 an order. Additional terms apply. Welcome back. Stonehenge is one of the world's most famous Neolithic sites. The painstaking arrangement of stones dates back over 5,000 years and there's always been a number of questions about the site and the stones that make up the monument. The outer stones are believed to originate from the southwest of England while the so-called blue stones originate from Wales. But for a number of years there have been questions in academic circles about the central altar stone and now it turns out it's not Welsh at all but instead appears to have originated in Scotland. Anthony Clark, researcher at Curtin University in Wales explained to the BBC how he figured out the mystery by analysing the rock and discovering that it could only have come from the far north of Scotland. He's hoping that the Welsh can forgive him. I'm not sure they'll ever talk to me again. It's a loss for Wales, no doubt. But Wales has contributed so many rocks to this monument. I'm sure Scotland can have one. The altar stone weighs more than six tonnes and it would have to have been transported over 450 miles from its site of origin near the Orkney Islands. Professor Chris Kirkland of Curtin University says he doesn't know how it was done, but that it also hints at a level of cooperation and organisation in Neolithic society that was previously undiscovered. That is the question. How did these people transport a six tonne object. Could it have come over land or via sea? There's still so much more research that can be done. It gives us really a window back into time to understand how early societies developed and what they loved and held dear. There's been a lot of excitement recently about breakthroughs and treatments for Alzheimer's disease and the forms of dementia. This week has the approval of the first of a new generation of drugs intended to slow the progress of these disorders. And like Animab has been given the green light by the UK's Medical and Healthcare Products Regulatory Agency or the MHRA. Professor Tara Spire-Jones of the University of Edinburgh says it's a significant breakthrough. Scientifically, this is a turning point for Alzheimer's disease and dementia research more broadly because these drugs like the Canimab that are actually antibodies that remove toxic amyloid from the brain, they're slowing disease progression for the first time. So they're not a cure, they're not making people better, but they're making the disease progress more slowly. And that is huge progress for us as scientists and hopefully bringing hope to people living with dementia. Alzheimer's Research UK is called the Clinical Trial Results Momentous. And one of the original pioneers of the idea of tackling the plaque that causes Alzheimer's, Professor John Hardy described the drug's approval as historic. It's hoped that it will be the first of many new treatments designed to slow Alzheimer's and dementia early, but there's bad news if you were hoping to get it prescribed via the NHS. That's because the NHS spending watchdog believes that the drug does not have a significant impact on the disease. Jonathan Wenger is the Chief Medical Officer of the National Institute for Healthcare and Excellence, or NICE, but he says the maths doesn't stack up right. Unfortunately, I think we're all very disappointed, but most of all uh, patients, relatives and carers of people with dementia in this country at the moment. We're sorry that the basis of that analysis means that we can't recommend the Canamap today in our draft guidance. It's open for consultation. And that's because the benefits are relatively small and the costs are really high. California coast is famous for Malibu surfers and sea lions. The somewhat excitable sea creatures are a regular fixture along California's beaches, but the summer has seen dozens of the animals fall ill. It wasn't just sea lions either. Dolphins have also been affected by what appears to be domoic acid poisoning. Alaya Misa is the operations manager at the Marine Mammal Centre in San Luis Obispo County and she says that the toxin is produced by algae that then gets eaten by small fish and then the sea lions. The Marine Mammal Centre is responding to a multitude of calls here and rescuing them. These animals are seizing on the beach. Our teams are working overtime. Right now, currently, there isn't a, a warning for human consumption, um, but sea lions are the first indicators of that toxin being in the environment. 
Dr. Alyssa Deming is a veterinarian in Orange County and she says the neurotoxin can be lethal and they're struggling with the number of cases they're seeing. We've recently seen an uptick of actively seizing animals coming into our beaches. The demoic acid bloom has over the past several weeks been sticking up in the Ventura area, Santa Barbara and San Luis Obispo. In Orange County we've rescued about 20 animals dead or alive. About five of them were dolphins or that northern fur seal and the remainders were sea lions. They've been coming in in pretty critical condition um, and we've been having a lot of challenges trying to stabilize them. They're not being responsive to treatment. This has been the Sunday 7. Wherever you're listening, do us a favour and hit the follow button. We'll be back tomorrow at 7am with the regular Smart 7. Have a great rest of your weekend. Written, produced and published by Daft Doris. It can be hard balancing taking care of kids, senior loved ones and yourself. Remember, it's okay to ask for help. There's a reason 29 million families have turned to Care.com. Find background-checked sitters, nannies, and senior caregivers who can help with everything from watching kids after school to senior meal prep. Whether you need full-time, part-time, or even occasional help, you can view rates and book highly rated caregivers that fit your budget and schedule. Get the help you need with Care.com.